All right, so thanks for joining today. We're going to be talking on a wide range of topics, uh, covering the first through probably the third video. Um, we'll have lots of questions and good discussion. And again, thank you for joining. Um, this should go from hormonal contraceptive all the way uh, to fitness score and back around to what um, is happening in modern society. Hope you enjoy. So welcome back to the Coronius Focus podcast. Uh, I'm joined here today with one of my good friends, uh, and he had some questions about the first couple of videos I did. So he's going to ask him, and we're going to integrate some questions that you guys have posted online throughout the top uh, throughout the time. So um, keep it really conversational. Don't know where this is going to go. I haven't seen the questions yet. So see what happens. So go ahead. Cool. Appreciate you uh, letting me ask some some questions. So. I guess uh, just to start out, maybe kind of summarize for me the the very first video when we were talking about the cost and purpose of males, and and I guess my interpretation of it is you're talking about mainly the fitness score, right? The fitness score, the fitness function, and how we started at I guess version one dot of life with asexual reproduction right. and progressed through that. Maybe give me kind of like a recap summary of of kind of your reasoning and thoughts behind that. Sure, so um, the first life that evolved was just basically a self-replicating protein, right? So, um, and with a mutation rate. And so asexual life relies primarily on only the mutation rate and its ability to, to create good variants inside of the environment or, or the predation sphere, right? As, it, as more life evolved. So the only real strategies that, that a bacterium or an asexually uh, reproductive species can use is just to have more or mutate, have more and mutate faster at the same time, which gives them a higher probability of, of catching, so to speak, in the random chance of the mutation, um, a good trait out of the ether. And then that allows them some sort of competitive advantage down that line. Um, one of the, the big mysteries model wise of how it jumped from asexual to sexual is that you take a huge hit to the reproduction rate when you when you dedicate half your species roughly to non-reproductive members namely males um, so it's been a struggle they still haven't quite cracked that code um, how life made that initial transition and I think that the, the, the best argument out there so far has been something akin to the Red Queen hypothesis in that getting uh, the ability to cross-pollinate good variants from two different lines through sexual reproduction is a big enough boost to your fitness score than is lost by the reproductive uh, decline. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, and that's number one, and, and, and from that, the idea that, that with the males of your species, you can then get a differential mutation rate, you can mutate, the, you know, because in asexual life, if you increase the mutation rate too much, then too many of your offspring die. But in sexual life, what you can do is, you can, you can, you don't have to have one mutation rate, you can have two. You can have a mutation rate on your female line, which is lower, and so it's more, we'll say it's more stable and keeps the good variants without having uh, detrimental mutations mm -hmm. come in. And then the, the male line, you can vary way more. And then you can actually allow the environment to weed out bad variants in the male line. And just all you have is, all, you, all, you have, all that returns to re-inject genetic code is good variants in quotation positives. marks. Right, and positives, right. Okay. So that's kind of the nutshell version of it. That makes sense. So, again, you 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 sort of referenced in the in the first presentation about uh, you know the fitness score and what that actually means, and then 
you know, as we, as you progressed throughout the series, you kind of got into, you know, what that level of consciousness means and how, you know, really that sounds like that's definition of meaning of life, right? Am yeah. I, did I have that right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, it's, um, it's definitely a bigger concept than I can find words for a lot of times. Uh, I, I, I think that an argument against the fitness score, how do I explain this? You could posit other meanings of life, but they become irrelevant in the macroscopic framework. Because any other meaning of life, if you were to take that and make it that your goal, anything you think of, wouldn't continue throughout time. Maximizing fitness score is the meaning of life because that's what propagates through time by definition. So it would be like trying to run a business where you, you didn't maximize profit, right? Okay. In a weird way. It's the thing that, that you're driving for. And so if you try to maximize a different metric, and that would be what you call the meaning of your life, um, over the long term, you become irrelevant because you're not there anymore. Unless you're propagating forward, you don't matter to the history books. And I mean the life history books, right? The 3.5 billion years. The only life that has mattered up to this point is the life that successfully reproduced over 3.5 billion years. And that's the definition of maximizing fitness for. Okay. So, like, what would you say to someone? I mean, to, to me, right, uh, I, I currently don't have any children. Right. So, what would you say to somebody who, who doesn't have children that is listening to this and says, well, if the meaning of life is having children, then I guess why am I here or what's the, what's the purpose? Is, I mean, I, I like the idea behind the fact that you can boil it down to biology and evolution. Yeah. But it's kind of, I guess, disappointing to hear that if you were, yeah. if you were someone who didn't have children. Yeah, it can uh, it can evoke a sense of nihilism, right? Like that 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 since that's all that matters, kind of nothing matters. It makes it kind of empty. Um, that's a hard question, man. Because it's 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 the the interpersonal aspects of of the discourage you know in modern society right now, and that's part of the reason why I started the podcast. To be honest with you, like the the relationships between males and females are, are, are askew. And I, I don't think that, that human beings in the past had to struggle with this. Like the idea that the hardest part of your life is finding a mate, you know, long term. I think that's somewhat new. Um, Males had a failure rate for reproduction that was higher than females in the past, but it wasn't astronomically high. We're, I mean, we're talking in the 30% max, right, under monogamy. And I don't think that... Again, I don't think that that being... Depression, or not depression is not the right word. Uh, the negative viewpoint on it isn't the right perspective. It's, it's, it's become a bigger challenge. And I think maybe that's where we'll go with some of these later on is that the old methods still work. Like the hero's journey that's listed on all those stories, that still is functioning. It, and it can't not, right? Like the... It just, it's we've put up all these societal roadblocks to reproduction that are all made up. It doesn't take that much money to have kids and it doesn't take that much energy to have kids either. And once you have kids, life's built in a bunch of mechanisms inside of your brain and your biochemistry that reprogram you for that task. So the idea that you have to be ready to have kids is also something that's just not like, that's not, the fact that we go through puberty in our 14, 14 years old, life doesn't make mistakes like that. It didn't, it didn't make us go through puberty during our mid-teens to say, no, 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 you have to wait till your mid-30s. Like, that's, no. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're ready. And it sounds bad because we've grown up thinking teen pregnancies are bad. And I'm not, I'm not advocating for young children having, having children. What I'm saying is, is that there are processes built in to the reproductive process itself 
that prepare you for the journey itself. In other words, you almost can't, you, you can't prep for something like that. It just happens naturally as you take on the path. So I, th I think a lot of the, the issue right now in the dating market is, and it, we kind of touched it in the last video, um, the selection process that females are, females aren't exerting a selection process anymore. They just aren't. And, and the issue, the issue stems from the fact that, that we've eliminated the idea of appropriate gendered roles in society. And so because of that, because everything's become androgynous to some degree, the idea that you could have a female selection preference or courtship role that's different from the male courtship role has kind of gone out the window. You know, you hear a lot of people talk about things like, well, how come, how come guys can sleep around and girls can't? And like they, you know, and, and it's the wrong perspective. Like the roles are there to maximize reproductive success long-term stably from each line's perspective innately and because we're we're different the maximal behavioral pattern is different to be a to be a seed spreader is a maximal strategy in the males that's why it's celebrated mm -hmm. right and, and celebrate is mm -hmm. not the right term in civilized society it shouldn't be celebrated but if you as a male sire a lot of children via sleeping around your fitness score goes up. If you, as a female, sire a lot of children by sleeping around, your average fitness score on each offspring goes down because paternal investment in your ch children historically has, has helped their fitness score. And sleeping around a whole bunch would indicate that you're not being super selective for the genes that you're passing forward, which again, lowers your fitness score when compared to a female who's being choosy because you're not gaining a rate there, right? So, and, and let's just break it down in the math. If you have a, a married woman locked down who chose very selectively her husband, same age, and a female who's single, sleeping around, and is trying to get pregnant, right? With, mm -hmm. And not selective at all, or very minimally selective, right? And you compare them, they could have the same number of kids, they can have one every, we'll give them 15 months, give them a little extra recovery time, right? But the quality of children, you would assume, is higher on the female side. Now, you could make an argument that the diversity of the other female might increase her role, mm -hmm. but more than likely, the amount of resources she's going to be able to pour into them, because she's going to be a single mother, are going to be less, so their opportunities to also gain mates and be reproductively successful are minimized. So, in our current framework, again, it's not under the monogamous system anymore. We have, we're in this weird insipid use social <laughs> like paradigm where we have a reproductively suppressed female class who sex now is not reproduction. So sex actually takes on a different role in the lives of them. It's just like the naked mole rats. They, they mount without reproduction, right? They, they have sexual activity that doesn't involve reproduction. And maybe that's a bonding mechanism. Maybe it's a social cohesion mechanism. Maybe it's a temporary solution to the incel problem so that the males don't rebel. Mm -hmm. But the point is when that's competing with the old framework of the breeding type that is monogamy, um, the dating pool gets muddied with both. And then the old game that is um, the selective belt style that has suitors that she then chooses from, right? I don't know how to say that in the way. It's polluted. Well, it's it's that if you're look, the main driver of males is sex, mm -hmm. right? It's just sexual contact, copulation in general. So, if you have easier access in path A versus path B, it, it's very few males that'll take on the harder path and be able to see the the reward down that path, right? They're not. We didn't evolve the instincts for that because we had never, we've never. Sex always meant reproduction, if that, if that makes sense. Yeah. So now that it doesn't, it's almost like a 
fake path. Yeah, you can get married and, and date someone, but if they're, if they're infertile, it's not reproduction. So you're satiating your reproductive drive without actually reproducing. And it's, it's almost like a trap, so to speak. And it works based on the same way that like sugary foods work to satiate your hunger. Mm -hmm. It's not really nourishing you. It's just giving you some calories. So what does that mean for us long-term wise, or at least in the next couple of years? I mean, I know that's... God, no, man. Oh, God. I have no idea what that means for us long-term. I, I Honestly, I can't see... At this point in time, I don't know how we thread the needle through this. Um... The next video that we that I put up in the in the Meaning of Life series will be focused on the effects of birth control, and that's really that's really the root cause of a lot of the societal upheaval that's going on right now. And it's hormone changes, right? And I, I am foreshadowing a little bit here, but there are some systemic problems with the system given the hormonal imbalance we've done through the progesterone and estrogen supply chain we're feeding young fertile females. It, 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 it's a behavior modification. It's a mate selection modification. It's, it even impacts fertility later in life. Like there's, there's just so much about it that it impacts everything. And it's, it's hard to overstress that. I don't know, since it modifies the female behavior so much and so much of the male hierarchy and how and male behavior is based on what females choose mm -hmm. and, and prefer, um, I don't know how you get through that with it. And again, I'm not arguing for, I'm not arguing against any form of birth control. I'm primarily talking about hormonal contraceptive here. Um, the Puritans among us would, would argue that condoms and and copper IUDs are the equivalent. I don't necessarily agree with that. I, I think that uh, that the root of their argument is basically something like without the discipline necessary to subvert a drive, right? You shouldn't be allowed to subvert it to your intellect. And there's logic there because in the path that gains you the discipline to be able to control your own drives, you actually grow and learn in that path. And that gives you the wisdom to actually be able to intellectually control a drive. There's logic there. Subverting it to your intellect without that discipline is almost like unearned, like you don't have the wisdom to really have the power that you have, so to speak. So it's a cheat, like a cheating sort of thing where the, the right. pure fact of any sort of contraception in general kind of right. negates the whole... Well, we've always had contraception. And, 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 and this is going to sound super Puritan, but the point is it's the same thing with any, any one of your drives, right? The appropriate way to subvert or yeah, subordinate your drives to your logos, to your will, to your perception is through discipline. And so if you want to become stronger, you go to the gym, right? If you want to lose weight, you go on a diet, right? If you, if you want to control your reproductive functions... You control your reproductive functions, meaning you don't you, like you don't copulate, and that willpower to resist the drive is the a, that that discipline, the journey, the path that gets you to that being disciplined like that makes you grow in willpower and strength. That's how you become a powerful person. It's part of the hero's the journey. Path of the hero. Yeah. 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 So again, and I'm really not advocating for the abolishment of condoms and, and copper. I understand the logic behind it. Um, like we kind of went on a rabbit hole there, but it is interesting, right? That, that, that people, you know, the argument is made, and again, outside of the morality of the conversation, the argument's made something to the effect of a woman's right to choose in the case of abortion. And every time that's said, my only thought is, well, in the majority of cases, you actually had the right to choose the night that you slept around. And the choice was given to my you know base reproductive drive in this moment or think through it and and, and suppress it with my perception in other words knowing that the future will hold a path that I don't like and if you're in if you're talking about a woman at the abortion clinic 
in line to do that, what you're really saying is, in the outside of the small number of cases of rape and incest and problems, right? The majority of abortions aren't that. In the majority of cases, what they're basically saying is, this was a mistake that I couldn't foresee. Well, the answer is, why couldn't you foresee it? You couldn't control. Yeah, exactly. And I don't, I don't think that you couldn't actually foresee it. it. It's that they couldn't control themselves in the moment. They didn't have enough discipline or willpower in the moment. And that's kind of a problem with our society in general is we, we lack a lot of that. And that's male and female, right? That's yeah. not, it's just so happens that the... We're talking about that right now. Female, yeah. It's discipline on the male side is is just as bad. I mean, the majority of the male population right now isn't even militarily viable in the United States and, and the Western world in general. And, it, you know, we're all, like, a lot of the males are, are, are satiating themselves other ways. And that's kind of the ironic thing, right? It's like, if you just sit back and look at it, here you have... A big group of, of fertile females, notionally, chemically sterilizing themselves monthly, while the males their age masturbate to images of fertile females. And if you just kind of like process that for, for just like, I don't know, a week, five days, whatever, like it makes you go crazy. You're like, what? Like, what? Why? What are we doing? Yeah, what are we doing? And... And that sterilization piece, it hits hard. And what's really f interesting about it is I know a lot of females who are in their late 30s who are desperately trying to have children in fertility clinics. And, and, and again, I don't want to, I don't want to know, I don't want to surmise that I know why they're there, but I can tell you that fertility drops off for females pretty hard after 35. And that's just, at 35, 90% of the eggs you were born with are gone. They're gone. And you can't get them back. And there's no real way to... There's a window. It's a, and it's a very short... It's why it makes this conversation so hard is that... It's not fair. <laughs> yeah. And it just isn't fair, right? Males have a much longer reproductive time span. And they're, they don't have a clock on them like females do. It's not the same. You know, males don't have a fertility drop till I, I think it's like mid-40s. And so uh, women have to figure their lives out much quicker. They have to. If they're going to have children, they have to figure everything. They're on a clock, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's part of the reason why, why males mature at a slower rate. I don't really know. But... The fairness argument kind of just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's fair or not. It just is. Mm -hmm. And so you have two choices. You can get pissed off at how unfair the world is and act like Cain, right? Curse God because it's not fair. Why isn't my way of living being rewarded? Mm -hmm. Or you can realize that because your way of living is not being rewarded, maybe you need to change your way of living because you can't change the universe, but you can change yourself. That's the one thing you have control over. So if, if, you, if you're always worried about how messed up the universe is and wanting it to change, you're always going to be pessimistic because it's hard as shit to change. Mm -hmm. Probably shouldn't do this. We'll edit that out. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I kind of want to switch gears too because I, there's a lot more of your buildup that you talked about before we got to modern age, right? Because yeah. we were talking uh, about... Um, when you introduced the first video, you introduced the second video and, you know, I had some questions about it and you kind of identified that it's, it was really leading up to maybe, what'd you say, the fifties or the twenties or something where you had the, 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 the gen, the, what is it? Nuclear family. And then yeah, modern days 60s. is a little bit different. Can you kind of expound on that a little bit? Yeah. Um, well, the, the timing is what's really interesting is, is the birth control pill was, was really started to be mass produced late sixties, early seventies. And that's when it, um, started to change things. Right. And that's when the imagery popped up too, which is fascinating. And we'll, we'll deep dive that on the next video, but the, the family breakdown happened right after that. And that's not a coincidence. Um, there's a lot of things that, that, that go into 
how the pill affects mental state, number one, that, that explain the increase in divorce rate. It explains the, uh, the increase in feminization of masculine, which has happened a lot. Um, yeah, it explains the imagery of the hero and, and the entry of women into the workplace, which I think even feminists would admit that, right? The pill really did allow for women to enter the workplace. And again, you can look at these things as though I'm really against them negatively. I'm really not. Like, I, I do sense that there's a lot of... The one thing I'll say that I do think is negative is I don't think people are finding meaning in their lives as well as they used to. And that's on both sides, both sides of the gender, right? I think, I think, I think a lot of people feel lost and nihilistic and as if their lives don't matter, right? And that's the one component of this that I can't rectify with a positive use social end is that we're not wired for this. And I can't really imagine how we get wired for the meaning that we need for it. Because one of the ways that you, you know, most people's lives are, are just routine and monotony. You know, day after day, the same stuff. You deal with stress. And, you know, that's interspersed with tragedy mostly, right? And then... Occasional happiness pops up, roughly. And the way you combat that is by giving someone like a, a sense of purpose. You know, that's, that's meaning. And that's where the old myths worked. You know, you could, you could embody Heracles, right? You could, em, you could embody the, and I don't mean physically, I mean the, the, the parts of the, his character that, that made him who he is, the hero's journey. You could, you could apply that beyond just going and confronting a beast. You could apply it to science or to your trade and just tackling the unknown and pushing the envelope forward and, 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 then, and then passing that on as you got older to an apprentice, you know, that was the male side. Mm -hmm. The same thing with the female side. You could, you could invest it in, in building not just a house, but a home and raising children and nurturing them and caring for them and developing that bond and, and, and seeing them off to, through maturation and then passing all of that knowledge on to your daughter for the next cycle, right? There was this line on both sides of, of stored knowledge and meaning that just, it kind of just like evaporated all in the span of four decades. And I, I, I don't know how. Okay. So like, like at that point, everybody became responsible for everything and nothing. Yeah. 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 As soon, as soon as it's, it's, it, it's interesting because, you know, I've read quite a bit of feminist literature and I agree with a lot of it. And this is the funny thing is like, I actually don't think that either side is wrong. They've all identified the same problems. And what I mean by that is when, when, when the feminist side says based on some of the effect of, well, the masculine medical system like forced bad things on the birthing process for women. They are absolutely right. Yes, they did. And it's funny because the masculine medical system back in the day basically scoffed at all the midwifery, right? The, the, the doulas and the midwives who had been birthing for thousands of years in chain, passing on knowledge of how to help with labor pains and everything. And here comes like, 1860s doctor, be like, no, just take some laudanum, that'll help you. As if they're, and this is, this bothers me about everyone, right? Including the atheist community. As if their intellectual prowess was more than, than thousands of years of, of wisdom induced knowledge, right? And that's what, that's really the, the crux of what I think is dying here is that there's this intellectual vein that thinks that that we should subvert every part of ourselves to the intellect and that's it's it's very dangerous because your intellect is dumb like it, it's dumb in the sense that it can never beat 3.5 billion years of tested sure behavior you can't think through that 
Like it doesn't work. There's a reason if your intellect was smart enough to be in control of your reproductive functions, it would have evolved that way. It's not. And that's why you're not in control of that. That's why, that's why males and females both are notionally in control of those things, right? Yeah. They're just not like it's, it's important. You know, you don't control your intestines. You don't control your heartbeat. You don't control your lungs because you can't. And you probably shouldn't subjugate your reproduction to hand to mouth, right? That's probably not a good thing. If you're going to do it, you at least need to have the full drive under control because that drive is linked to many other things in people's brains. Mm -hmm. So I, I the, the, the breakdown of the family that happened in the 60s and going forward, um, I don't know how we recover from it. The divorce rate's over 50%. The birth rate's under like 1.6, I think, or 1.7 last, last reading uh, per fertile female. And that's not just the United States. It's a pattern. It's, it's all of Europe, Russia, East Asia, North America. And, you know, people are like, well, Africa's got above replacement pop birth rate. Well, now, there's no, why would you assume, and India, same thing, why would you assume they're not hot on our heels? Coming right down the line, right? And <laughs> these trends, like, I don't know how you... How do you reverse them? How do you re... You know, one of the things is that the, the way in which the old system was maintained was, was through religion. There was societal pressure because there were norms of behavior that were encoded in religion. And, you know, one of the contributing factors to all of this that, again, the conservatives of the day were warning about in not the most articulate way, but were warning about was that all of these changes would just and, and like the dangers of promiscuity and pornography and everything were warned about they were warned about and i still don't think we've come to terms with with how dangerous they are if not it's like the the dragon that we're refusing to acknowledge exists right okay. remember that old story which one was that? Um, it's a children's story. It's um, it's it's about a little boy in a house, and he wakes up, and there's a dragon there. He tells his mom there's a dragon, and his mom's like, "No, nah, honey, there's no dragon. There's no such thing as dragons." And every time she says that, the dragon grows, right? Okay. And it, it it's the same principle. It's like you know, we keep getting warned by everyone. Hey, look, there's a dragon. Hey, you know, uh, men are dropping out of society in mass. Fact. Their their enrollment rates in in college, they're, they're losing their virginity later and later. Not that that's a bad thing, but the females aren't doing that, right? Uh, marriage is getting pushed off later and later. Males are just, they're, they're, not, they're not excelling like they used to. And some would say, well, good, now that makes room for females. And it's like, well, maybe. But I don't know that there was like a lack of space. You know what I mean? That, that implies there wasn't room. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's the way... I think the more people you have invested in your workforce and your society, the bigger your society is. It's not It's not like the pie is one size and you kick males out, you get more females in. We just lost males. That's all that happened. So it's just like a slow exposure to disinterest or disengagement? Well, I mean... What's, what's, the, what's the current driver for a young male to care about society? Well, let me rephrase. What's the old driver for a young male to care about society? So in the old system, what's the reason why, as a young male, you would, you would uh, say, try to get a good job? Why yeah. would you want to do that? Get a good job, support your family. Get make a good make, wife. You know, yeah, the whole thing. Make your parents proud. Upstand your name. And all of that relates to your personal fitness score directly. Because in the old system, the higher up the hierarchy you are, the better across you get to pick. You, you want to climb the hierarchy because you get to pick a cross and that means reproduction. What about today? That's not happening today. You move up the hierarchy, 
Are you are you getting married in your twenties? Most aren't. No. You're not getting married in your twenties. You're not having kids in your twenties for sure. You'll be lucky to get one or two out if the averages hold. Like it's just there's no real. And on top, I think the main thing to take from this is that females as a group are no longer selecting a cross for that. They're not. Um, and, the, and again, I'm overgeneralizing. There are pockets that are, right? This is still relatively how it works in rural America and in some church communities. You know, the Mormon community has a decent marriage rate. Uh, it's not quite as high as the, the national average. Some of the other sects of Christianity, like Jehovah's Witnesses, have a low Seventh-day Adventist as well. Catholicism's rising up there, unfortunately. Islam has a lower, lower divorce rate as well. Um, so in some places where religion has stayed strong and there's a lot of social pressure, some mm -hmm. insular communities, you haven't seen this effect, but that's not where the majority of us live, right? And I don't really, I don't really have any advice other than what's been given already in all of the religions to date. The okay. same path is still your best choice. There's no better one. And... And it's because in the current system, it's actually set up to suppress your reproduction. So if you're trying, if you, if you want that path of meaning with reproduction in it, the only way to get there is in the old system. That's it. You, you have to find it. Uh, you, have to, you have to assume that there's going to be an opposite across from you wherever you're at in the hierarchy that is looking back. Otherwise, it's all just tender. Now, I, I don't disagree with you. Okay, so let me be clear on that. But what would you say, and, and I don't think you mentioned brain design or, or what this actual fitness score is working yeah. towards, other than, you know, just consciousness. <laughs> yeah. So when you say that, if you think that brain design or intelligent design, if we are the way that we are because maybe that's the next step in our evolution of achieving that greater consciousness. Like, does this need to happen? Or are, are you thinking that mm. it, we don't know right now because we could be on a path to, to destruction of where yeah. we got to from here? No, that's a really, that's a really good point. Um, so again, the, the advice from a personal perspective for an individual is not necessarily the analysis from the system, right? Um, and what I mean by that is, evolution doesn't care if you're happy. And it doesn't care if you have meaning. All it cares is if you do or don't do what you're supposed to do, right? So, if it can, I, I mean, are the worker ants happy? Do they find a meaning in what they do? I, I don't know. I, I seem to doubt it, right? <laughs> but it's in them with the naked mole rats, right? Like maybe they have a, a, a mole rat the riveter poster on their tunnel wall as they're digging. I don't know. Maybe they get meaning out of being the best tunneler. You know, maybe maybe reproduction isn't the only route to meaning is what I'm trying to say, right? It's possible that, that, that they can be impelled. And we're kind of fringing on what I talked about the last video is that how complicit are they in their own reproductive suppression? Mm -hmm. And is that necessarily a bad thing, right? If... If they are getting an inclusive fitness score boost, you would assume that somewhere in their primitive brain, they're being given given a meaning, uh, guiding compass towards those behaviors, because that's that's what guides you. Meaning is how you're guided behavior, sure. right, through evolution. So we don't have it now, I don't think, because I, I just I look internal to myself and I don't feel it, right. The idea of, of, of being a worker class and focusing on inclusive fitness score doesn't seem to resonate with me internally. And, and I, don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm different. Um, is it possible we could develop it? And I would say, yes, maybe. I don't know how long that would take. It's possible. And it's also possible it could be programmed into us based on current circuitry, although that seems really hard. What I mean by that is through social 
conditioning, right? And what's already happening, we have the androgynous St. George story being shown all the time that's reprogramming the roles inside of the young, young kids' minds. And again, that's, I'm not really saying that in a negative way. It's just a fact. That's what's happening. We've decided that the ultimate aspiration for both male and female now is career. That's what we've decided as a group. And because we've decided that, all of the androgynous hero myth comes with that as a result of it, right? The artists reflect that in what they show. And I guess I don't think it's a grand design. I don't think it's a conspiracy theory because if it, you can't make something like that work long term. It's, that's, you know, like 12 guys sitting in a basement somewhere trying to like mastermind this and get it to work on the, on the grand scale it's not like no one's ever thought of this before, you know? It's just mm -hmm. so happened that it works now because we have the hormonal imbalance in the contraceptive. We have the technology that takes some of the meaning out of the homework because if you think about this, right, like women probably got bored in the 50s. Like they had a dishwasher, they had a, they had a washing machine, they had running water, you know, they had an oven, they had a stove top with gas. They didn't have to do, like there was a lot of... And uh, I'm not saying this in any way. Manual labor provides a lot of meaning. When you, if you ever go work outside, like you get a dopamine kick from that, and you makes yourself feel, it makes you feel good about yourself. Accomplished. Or... Yeah, and so all of that physical labor that used to be done, like washing the clothes on a washboard and like going and getting water and all the extra labor on the home, um, probably provided a lot of meaning, and not in a negative way, like real meaning. It's it's not trivial to to be able to turn your your to use your body to make something better. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And something similar is happening to the males now, I think, in that, you know, they had a lot of manual labor back in the day, but we're, we're all working from an office now for the most part, you know? A lot of us are moving out of the, yeah, manual labor. Yeah. And so there's, there's a struggle to find meaning in general because we probably don't get enough exercise across the board. I don't want to just put it all on that, but, you know, there's something to be said about that. And, you throw in the, the hormonal contraceptive on top that delays out reproduction, and then you you lose um, perspective because that, you know, the hormones mimic pregnancy, and pregnant women think about the world differently than non-pregnant women by design. So you shift a huge portion of your society's views. And it's it's a wave, you know what I mean? It's, it's not That's not something you can... It's like it's like the old argument, right? It's like, did Hitler rise to power because he was a conspiracy theorist and like super good at like conspiring to take over, or was mm -hmm. the German population ripe for those ideas? Mm -hmm. And I, I think the latter is more true, right? I think there's a Hitler around or a Stalin or a, a Mao around all the time. They may not be articulate enough to get there. That's one thing, but the other thing is in a healthy society that doesn't it's not ready for those ideas or, or isn't like having some sort of yearning for what they're selling right they just become the crazies on the side you know what i'm saying so it, it's it's an interplay between the idea and the society being ready for it does that make sense or the the i don't want to say right place right time but it's the society is primed for whatever it is so yeah same thing with actors or musicians, right? right? Yeah, you can have you can have a similar yeah exactly right. You could have somebody who sounded a lot like, or maybe really good music that was overlooked in the past becomes really iconic today because I can't think of an example of that. It happens with movies all the time though. Movies come out and bomb when they first come out, and then we go look back. It's like oh man, that was a really good movie. It's like it, they weren't ready, right? They weren't ready for the idea. Yeah. Same thing. That makes sense. Dude, we were all over the place. Yeah, that's that's a lot of a lot of information. You know, what's funny is even throughout this conversation, I was thinking back to a couple of the other episodes and thinking about questions that I wanted to ask because again, it's not the way you present it in the series is very structured. Mm -hmm. um, but it's hard to have that conversation without wanting to directly relate it back to your everyday life. Yeah, wanting to pull in you know the conversation of of every day. So I I think it's it's definitely beneficial to to have these discussions about it just to kind of bridge that gap as you move through the series. So 
Thanks everyone for joining us for this first talk video. Um, I'll have my buddy back over to do another one in about a week or so. Please keep watching the videos. Be sure to like and subscribe. Make sure you click that bell icon so you can get notified uh, when I post new stuff. Uh, if you have any questions, we really do want them. Um, you guys send your questions and will help us to move this thing forward and, and expand out these ideas. Uh, again, hit me up on Gmail, cronius.focus at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter. or Now I have a Reddit available as well, and I'm going to start the community on there as well to post questions, maybe live a little longer. All right, guys. Thank you. See you next time.